So I'd like to share with you three short poems. The first is a poem that I wrote when I was 17 years old. I remember the moment that inspired it quite clearly. I was in my bedroom at home, lying on the floor, doing my homework. And I could hear the chatter of the kitchen radio in the background. My parents always had the radio on. My mum liked Radio 4, my dad liked Radio 3, and the dial, and in those days it was a dial, was turned back and forth between these two stations several times a day. My mum came into my bedroom and she told me that my cousin's girlfriend, Sarah, had died. She was 19 and she died of stomach cancer. I remember thinking how strange it was that the world keeps going when something so tragic, so pointless, and so senseless had happened. Something so monumental for individuals, and yet the world carries on. It was also perhaps this moment when I first really thought about being mortal and about the inevitability of death. And so here is the poem that I wrote at that point. It's called My Radio. My radio speaks, talking through bad and good, ranting, regardless of life beginning, ignorant of death, the signal carries on. My radio is unfeeling, talking of people who are not people, discussing and debating while people die, transmitting treacle to disguise the taste of life and of death. My radio has no lifespan, no expectancy, no fear. The silent waves of noise cannot be hurt, cannot be killed, only heard until we die. And even then my radio talks on, passing its message to the next in line. Where there's life, there's frequency. Where there's long, there's short. Waves of talk, waves of talk. The other two, again, short poems that I'd like to read are not by me, but they're by my grandfather, Albert E. Limer. He wrote poetry throughout his life, and before he died, he recorded himself reading a selection of his poems. I've chosen these two because they bookend his poetic life, and because they remind me, or they remind us, that everyone was young once, but that time passes for everyone, and as we've already said this evening, everyone will die. The first poem is, as he describes, the first poem he ever wrote um, and was about his love for my grandmother, Eileen. It reminds me that the gentle old man that I remember was once a young lover, a side of him that I obviously never saw. So this short poem is called You Must Forgive Me. You must forgive me. I cannot choose but stare. Your eyes hold mine, though yours look otherwhere. Yet when they turn to mine and find me watching thee, for that sweet blush of thine, you must forgive me. You must forgive me, your name I love to hear. And when it sounds, I turn, though you're not near, and gaze at he whose voice has merely mentioned thee. And if I then rejoice, you must forgive me. You must forgive me, I cannot love you less. And all my love and overthoughtfulness that to your eyes seem wrong, esteem as love for thee, for when for when for this poor love song you may forgive me. Okay, and then this final poem is the last one on the tape of recordings that I have of him reading his poetry. After my grandfather finished reading this poem, there's an ominous and rather final sounding clunk on the tape as he turns off the recording equipment and then silence for the remainder of the old C60 cassette tape that he was using. And the poem is called Passing On. A few more years and then I shall survive only in others' memories, fading photographs, a recording tape or two perhaps, or blur of cine film vestigial evidence of a life that was. A few years further on, and these too will be gone, but still a name and data in public files remain. A few years further on, and then oblivion. 
when I should be one with that unnumbered company of all who are long gone and unremembered. Non-entity that was, then new identity, merely forever to be non-entity. <laughs>